Tonight on New Zealand's biggest bargain sale, we're off prizes including a Mitsubishi Gullet valued at $30,499 to just $550. A trip to two to Buenos Aires valued at $15,000 to just $450. Just two of the incredible bargains on sale the century. And here's the star of the show, Steve Parr. Thank you, thank you, good evening and welcome, and welcome to our audience too, good to see you. And I hope you people at home play along the game as well. This is New Zealand's biggest bargain sale. Over the next 30 minutes, we will produce our first ever sale of the century champion, someone who could go on to win over $70,000 in prizes. And to help me introduce our first three contestants, will you please welcome the lady with all the bargains, Judith Kirk. How are you? I am very well. I'm pretty good. Yeah. Welcome to the rest of New Zealand on this rather momentous occasion. Yes, indeed. You know, I do remember you. Years ago, I used to sit on my bed on a Saturday morning oh. watching you on telly. That was on what now? 83, yes, yes. 84, two years of it. It was mm. great fun. All those kids watching Mass mm. Martin. Yes. You've been very busy, of course, 83, 84. You were, what, studying to be a nurse? Mm, first year, in fact, yep. And you've now qualified? And... Oh, no, no, registered nurse, you're right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> done a few things, actually. Done a bit of modelling, done yeah. a, you know, worked for a pharmaceutical company. You well, name it, I've done it. <laughs> well, let's see how good you are at introducing our first three contestants. Okay, I'll give it a go. Right. Our first contestant is a flower grower, whose main ambition is to retire young and not get pot bellied. From Levin, please welcome Jared Martin. Welcome, Jared. Who enjoys running half marathons. From Auckland, please welcome Glynis King. And welcome to New Zealand. Our first contestant is a milk vendor who enjoys a wide variety of sports and has a passion for skiing. From Taupo, please welcome Barry Maxwell. Barry. From Taupo, Barry, being a keen skier, you'd go to which ski field? I prefer to go to Tura. That's on the southern side of Melbourne. That's on the southern side. It gets some really nice snow there. What about down the South Island? They get even better snow and they have better weather too, but I just can't get there. Mm. Yes, I know. You can't get there often enough right down the main land. Barry, good luck in the game. Thank you. Hey, welcome to you, Glenna. Thank you. Now, Glenna, you're a bit of a uh, fitness freak. Netball, running half marathons. What your, what's your fitness plan to stay like this? <gasps> Every day out on the road. <sighs> but you fell over the other day too, didn't you? I did. Friday morning, after years of running, I crashed <laughs> to the ground and... Uh, Hands, oh, knees, no. elbows, and boots, Daisy. Hope right. you don't uh, fall over tonight, Glenys. Good I luck in the game. <laughs> Jared, you're a flower grower and like all sorts of music. What music in particular? Oh, contemporary, but uh, funny that sounds good appeals as well. What about the flowers? What sort of flowers? Uh, I'm trying to concentrate mainly on lilies. Do you uh, play your music to the flowers? <laughs> no, no, no. No, I love music. They, they do. do. They yeah. do. Well, good luck in the game, Jared. Thanks very much. And we'll see you later in okay, the gift shop. Okay, sure. Good luck, everyone. Have a great game. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody, $20 each. That much you get for nothing, the rest you are going to have to work for. $5 on for every correct answer, $5 off for an incorrect answer. And whoever has the most money at the end of this game will be our first sale of the century champion. Let's get into it with our first round of questions. A place abounding in all good things is described as the land of milk and what? Glenis? Honey. Milk and honey is right. Which natural fibre comes from the cocoon of a worm? Glenis. Silk? Yes. From which language do we derive the term faux pas, meaning a fox? Glenis? French. From French. What did a person swear to give up when they signed the pledge? Glenis? Drink. Yes, drink or alcohol, you're right. Who played James Bond in the 1971 film Diamonds Are Forever? Jared. Roger Moore. Sean Connery did. Which word rhymes with beak and means a forest tree from Southeast Asia? Jared. Teak. Yes. Well played. There goes our gift shop bell, Glenis. You are out in front of the stage. You have a chance of buying something which Judy's going to tell you about. You have $20 ahead of Jared and Barry, $40 to spend, and let's see if Jude can tempt you with this. Glenis, this really will grace anyone's desk. A fine example of handcrafted New Zealand leather. This executive for office set includes compendium, checkbook holder. I'm sure you can persuade Steve to throw something in the checkbook. Something for your business and credit cards and a desk pad. Now, normally, Glenis, this is $480, but tonight you can take it home, pop it on your desk for just $6 from Sarucci Leathers and Sale of the Century. There you are, Glenis. No problem at all. Six dollars and it's all yours. Just take it away and you've got so far ahead of the stage, it doesn't really matter. Six dollars for this magnificent setup. It's all yours. You Do you want to take it away? <laughs> Just like that. Go <laughs> for Now you get to keep that Gladys whether you win the game or not. That's 
all yours. Oh, well, the scoring, Jared and Barry on 20, Glenn is 34. Which member of the royal family spent six months at school in a straight... Jared? Prince Edward. Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, spent six months at school in Australia in 1966. To the nearest degree Celsius, what is the average body temperature of a healthy... Jared? 37 degrees. 37 is right. In which New Zealand resort town is the newspaper called Mountain Scene Pub... Jared? Mount Wanganui. Published in Queenstown. What year, what name is given to a deer less than a year old? Jared. A form? Yes. Good story. Up and down on that round a little bit there. Scores haven't changed at all. Slightly longer question this time for our nine famous faces on our fame game board. Behind eight of them is a great prize. Behind one is a $10 bonus, which if you pick that one will be added to your score. Now you can only answer this question once each, but no points are deducted for a wrong answer. I want you to tell me what is my name. I am an outdoor sport, first developed in Britain in the 15th century. A king is believed to have introduced me to London early in the 17th century. My first British amateur championship was held in 1885, and I later spread to the United States and Canada. The ball with which I am played was originally made of wood, then of feathers, but cheaper ones made of gutta percha developed later. I am played by individuals with a set of clubs. Glenis? Golf. Golf is right. Well anticipated, Glenis, those nine famous faces. Let's run through them for you. First up, we have Sally Field. Sally Field from Punchline. Peter Williams. A sport on one presenter. Meryl Streep. From Evil Angel. Roddy McDowell. A fright, a fright Night Part 2. Our home viewer, Melissa Anderson. Our very first home viewer. Her arm didn't like the trip to the zoo, but it is her sixth birthday today, so very happy birthday to Melissa. From Sport on One. Judy Bailey. Network News. Sam Neill. And Evil Angel. And Alison Holt. From Microwave Menus. There you are, Glenis. There are the nine famous faces. Eight great prizes and a $10 bonus, which at this stage will put you quite a way out in front. Who would you like? I'll have Alison Holt. Thank Let's you. Let's see what Alison Holt conceals. Well, Glenis, you've won this beautiful China Mantle top featuring the unique Rosenthal design valued at $474 from Pronto Clock and Watch Company. Great going, Glenis. You'll never, ever be late again. That's all yours. And we'll add a $15 bonus behind one of the faces for our next fame game question. Jared and Barry, 20, Glenis, 34. Politically, on what continent is the bamboo curtain set? Jared? The Asian. Yes, Asian continent is right. In the Northern Hemisphere, in which month does the harvest moon appear? September. What was the name of the aircraft Charles Kingsford Smith flew on the first... Barry? Through the St. Louis. The first trans-Tasman crossing in 1928 was the Southern Cross. What article of clothing is a derby or a bowler? Glenis. Hey. Yes. What is the four-letter English equivalent of the Iranian title Shah? Jared. King. King is right. And there goes the gift shop bell once again. Glenis still out in front for $9 ahead of Jared with 39 to spend. Glenis, let's see if Judy can tempt you with this. Now, Glenys, I have one of these magnificent Toshiba microwaves myself, and they really are something special. They're unique because they combine both microwave and convection cooking in the same oven, which in practical terms, Glenys, means a crispy brown roast chicken in just 18 minutes, and that's pretty quick. Now, normally valued at $799, tonight, take this one home, pop it in your kitchen for just $9 from Toshiba and sale of the century. What a great bargain there, Glynis. Nine dollars, which is your lead at this stage. And take it away, there is They're a chicken great. inside that, and you keep the chicken. <laughs> oh, Nine dollars. I'm getting more nervous. I don't think you're getting any points. Oh, well. No problem at all. Goodbye. <laughs> well, the score is now. Jared and Glynis, dead heat on 30, Barry on 15. Jude, who would you say is the most popular singing star of New Zealand history. Oh, no, that would have to be Dame Curry. You'll be right, yes. Now, for you people playing at home, Dame Kitty Takano, a singing teacher, was born on this day in 1895, well known for training many of our best classical singers. She's Dame's sister who? No, 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 no. And welcome back. While you're away, did you think about who Dame Kitty Takano, a singing teacher, was born on this day in 1895? Yeah, Dame's sister Mary Leo, of course. She's very proud of Dame Kitty, too, the way she's going. Back to the scoring now. Jared and Glenis on 30, Barry on 15. Another round of questions here for you, Barry. Time for you to bring up your score, I think. Which European capital has a famous district called the Latin Quarter? Jared. Rome. 
Paris, during which American war was the song Yankee Doodle? Dennis. The Civil War? The War of Independence it was. You only had two to choose from, didn't you? The national nickname of an Englishman is John Who? Jared. Oh. John Bull is his name. To which Christian denomination did President J.F. Kennedy belong? Jared. Oh, Catholic. Yes. Second chance now at the same game board. And with the scores the way they are so close, that $10 or the $15 bonus will come in extremely handy. Who am I? I was born in Christchurch in 1899 and died in 1982. I began my career as an actor and later became an eminent Shakespearean producer. In 1933, my first book was published in England and later I became probably the most widely known New Zealand writer of my time. I became a Dane in 1960... Barry? Agatha Christie. Continuing for Jared and Gladys, I became a Dane in 1966. Although my books were considered by critics to be well-written and well-constructed, my genre was the whodunit. Glennis. Nio Marsh. Dame Nio Marsh is right. <laughs> well done, Glennis. Going on a shopping spree already, you've done so far with your score at 55. Who would you like? The 10 and $15 is still there. I'll have Roddy McDowell. What does Roddy conceal? Well, Glennis, you'll be a winner with this exciting electric road race system complete with pistol grip controls and Ferrari racing cars valued at $150 from Lincoln Playcourt. There you go, Glennis. Now, you've got a bit of a problem, haven't you? Because you'll get five children. Well, this is Meredith, Gareth, Tara, Amber and Shelley from the ages of 24 to 15. Who are you going to give that to? Well, I've only got one son, so it'll be Gareth. I can see he'll be there. Charge you around, <laughs> look, you have a great time. You get to keep that, by the way, no matter what happens today. And we'll add a $25 bonus behind one of those faces for the next fame game. Score is still 25-25, Jared and Gladys and Barry 15. What nationality was the famous painter Francisco Goya? Jared, French. Spanish. In which month in 1914 did Britain declare war on Germany? Barry? August. August is right, the 4th of August. The Guarneri family of Cremona were famous makers of which six-letter instrument? Glennis. Guitar. The violin. What is the name of the huge southern continent of which New Zealand was a part million... Jared? Antarctica. Part millions of years ago was Gondwana land. There goes the gift shop bell and we have a double sale time. Glennis and Barry both on 20. The first one of you two to push your buzzer once Judy gives the low sale price We'll take this away. What better way to stay fit than with the gymnasium in your own home? You can do 20 different exercises on this versatile gym system. And it comes complete with abdominal board and home rower. Now to buy this, you're looking at $1,500. But tonight, guys, these fittings... Oh, whoops, that again. Fighting fit for just $16 from We Do Fitness Equipment and us, Sale of the Century. Look at that. That is magic. Just $16 for all this. Yeah, Glennis and Barry now as a milk vendor. Wouldn't you like that? I'd love it. $16. $15. $15. Glennis, Barry, first on the buzzer, 15 Take it away, Barry. <laughs> it does change your score somewhat, Barry, but there's plenty of time for it to come back, I think. With the stage of the stage, Jared, 15 Glennis, 20 Barry, 5 On with the scoring, which university degree is literally indicated by the initials B.A.? Jared. Best of art? Yes. And the proverb, a bird in the hand is worth out. Jared? Two in the bush. Two in the bush is right. What stimulants do we associate with coffee and Jared? Caffeine? Yes, you're right again. That's helped your score along quite considerably. Now the fame game, don't forget all three dollar prizes are there, 10, 15 and 25. What is my two word name? I'm a large island with an area of over 800,000 square kilometres and a population of about 4 million people. Rugged, snow-capped mountains cover much of my interior, and in contrast, my lowlands are hot and humid. Most of my people live in villages and supply all their own needs, but politically, I'm divided between two countries, one of them Indonesia. My western half... Jared? New Guinea? New Guinea is right. Well anticipated there, Jared. Boy, do you need these dollars now. 10, 15, and 25 could give you a very handy lead. Who would you like on the Fame Game board? Um, I think Judy Bailey's got an honest face. I'll try her. Let's see if the back of her is just as honest. <laughs> could you 
Wouldn't it come at a bit of time for you, Jared? That puts you twenty dollars out in front of this stage. Glennis twenty and Barry got a lot of work to come from you very soon. But let's check for our viewers playing at home where the other money was, Jude. Well, Sally Field was hiding the 15, and our little home viewer, Melissa Anderson, had the 25. Well, there you are. Lots of chances for scores to change in the next round. Back very soon with Fast Money. <laughs> and welcome back. This is the Fast Money round. 60 seconds worth of rapid-fire questions and answers. As per normal, our contestants, five on for a correct answer, five off for an incorrect answer. And boy, this round is very important for all of you. Jared, you've got a nice handy start there. Glennis, bit of time to make up. Barry, whew, boy, you're going to have to work hard on this round. 60 seconds on the clock, and your time starts now. Which article of clothing may have hobnails? <coughs> Glennis. Boots. Yes. What is the name for a male peafowl? <coughs> Jared. Cock. Peacock is right. In which country did the sport of judo begin? <coughs> Barry. Japan. Yes. What part of the body may have fallen arches? <coughs> Glennis. Yes, how many lines make a quatrain? Jared, four. Yes, in which Australian state is the Barossa Valley? Glennis. South Australia. Yes, what was Fred Dagg's real name? Jared. John Clark. Yes, what kind of creature is an iguana? Jared. A lizard. Yes, Lord Darnley was husband of Mary Queen of who? Jared. Scott. Yes, what word of three letters is a synonym for wager? Jared. Bet. Yes, what high mountains are the Yeti said to inhabit? Jared. The Himalayas? Yes, what kind of musical instrument is a bongo? Glennis? Drum. Yes. What is the plural of wife? Glennis? Wives. Yes. What kind of creature is an albatross? Glennis? Bird. Yes. What kind of animal is a perendale? Glennis? A sheep. Yes. What in the English is a furry? Glennis? A house. Yes. What gas has the letter symbol? And we do have our winner. What a round for Jerry! Great round there, Jared, with a late charge coming from Glennis and Barry. Jared's marvellous, marvellous game. Glennis and Barry, wow, what a game you two had. Jude's got something for you. Barry, prizes for the value of $1,500. Great game, thanks for coming along. And Glennis, $1,903. Profitable evening for you, thanks for coming along. Barry and Glennis, well played. Barry, enjoy yourself. Yeah, I have wonderful. Good deal. Glennis, did you realise that $15 between you and Jared was exactly what you spent throughout the show? Is that right? That's $15. Right? No, I didn't. Thanks for playing the game. Grant's got something for you two as well. Yes, you both received the electronic sale of the century board game from Lincoln Playcorp, plus our solid gold money clip from Michael Hill Jeweler. <laughs> Boy, good game there, Jerry. Come on, come on, in. that's a great game indeed. Only fifteen dollars at the end there. It was pretty close, yeah. yeah. And you've already you didn't, didn't win anything during the game, but you've got that seventy-five dollars worth of spending capital. Right. I think we should go shopping. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> now, there you go. Here we have Jared, who has already got enough money to yeah to buy the globe trotting or just going away for the night you'll travel in style with this elegant luggage it features a suitcase an overnight bag tote bag and garment bag all in genuine leather normally priced at two thousand one hundred and thirty five dollars tonight just eighty dollars from flight luggage and sale of the century oh there you go Jared. beautiful foot you feel that now feel lovely isn't it? beautiful beautiful leather now that's yours already so you've got enough in the bank for that now you can risk that your decision comes a little later and you can play for this magic dinner set tomorrow Here's an elegant dining combination, Gerard. The 36-piece bone diner ti Ooh, bone diner dinner set is highlighted by a 44-piece silver plate cutlery set and in a classic chest. Now, Gerard, normally you'd be paying $3,575, but tonight just $165 from Villaroy and Bock, Germany and Oneida, United States. How does that compare to yours, Les? Do you uh, like that? It's a bit better than ours, I think, yeah. Well, that doesn't wear it stop. No. What about this for a beautiful ring? A triumph of the jeweler's art. This exquisitely designed ring features a brilliant three-tiered cluster of 19 diamonds in an 18 karat gold setting. Normally priced at $6,000, tonight just $260 from Pasco's and Sale of the Century. Well, that would be great somebody to make a beautiful ring. It certainly would, yeah. A lovely ring. Yeah. Once again, that's not where it stops. You can risk the ring and come back and play for a dining table and chairs. 
A magical dining room creation from Italy, this magnificent meter dining suite in highly polished burr walnut and black lacquer makes an exciting statement in design. Normally priced at $11,500, tonight just $355 from Steam International and Sale of the Century. Beautiful dining suite. Lovely, isn't it? A few more dollars from the bank and you could be off to Argentina. Here's your chance to dance the night away in the city that never sleeps. Two people will fly business class to Buenos Aires spending six nights in the Hotel de las Americas. Normally $15,000, tonight just $450 from Aerolineas Argentinas and Sale of the Century. Off to Argentina. Magic prize, isn't it? A few more dollars. $550 in your bank if you continue on your winning way and you have won this Mitsubishi car. Presenting the Mitsubishi Galan Super Saloon Automatic with a 2-litre multi-point fuel-injected cyclone engine plus power windows, electric windows and central locking. It's built to perform and built to last. The Mitsubishi Galan Super Saloon Automatic is on the road at $30,499. Tonight, just $550 from your Mitsubishi Motors dealer. And here's a perfect compliment for your new car, a magnificent gold and diamond key ring from Michael Hill Jeweler. What a car, what a car. There is the key ring. You can hang on to that for just a minute. That's not where it stops either. $650, if that's how much you accrue in your bank, you win the whole shebang. Every prize you've seen, total prize value $70,709. That's a pretty good treat. It does. But the choice now rests with you. You have the luggage and leave the show or leave it behind and risk it and come back and pay for the dinner set. I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. Jared, what do you reckon? What's your decision? I think I'll come back next week, Steve. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. And we'll see Jared up against two more contestants tomorrow, 7 o'clock on 2 on Sale of the Century. Good night, Milford. And good night to the rest of New Zealand. Shut up. Bye-bye. Have a nice Monday night. with television.